In the past 5 years, even the past 10 years, hell, as long as the gaming industry existed, there were lies being told. Most of the time, they are forgivable, even forgettable. And more often than not, people have made their peace with the fact that lies are just part of advertising. Starts with a map of the world that glows in the fucking dark. <laughs> and it's great. So cool. Nevertheless, there are instances that, in my opinion, should have never been forgotten, and instead cemented in history as a lesson for you. Every year, new great, good and bad titles are being published, and every year there is small lies being told in order to get you excited. Surely we all remember the infamous classics. The Cyberpunk 2077 lies have been plentiful to say the least. And while I have well over 200 hours in the game, I remain objective enough to say these were some shameless lies. Like the fact there would be an option to ride a train or that you could use your mantis blades to run on walls. Another very well known example would be the Ubisoft downgrades, about which you can learn through many YouTube videos already. To cut it short, most of the time when Ubisoft creates a gameplay trailer or in-house demo version, this version is a little beefed up. The graphics are usually much better looking, animations are smoother and the UI often looks cleaner too. No Man's Sky is almost self-explanatory at this point, although I will purposely not say anything specific, given how much Hello Games redeemed themselves over the years with their incredible updates that not only delivered on the promises initially missed, but have built on them over time and exceeded expectations everywhere. Those are just examples. But for this video I have prepared for you 6 gameplay trailers that will probably leave you speechless when you realize how many lies did we let big companies tell us over the years. And my first target will be Anthem. Now hold on, yes we all know Anthem was a big flop, I still remember the memes, but how many of you remember the initial gameplay reveal? This cutscene style first person gameplay was never even planned for the final game. But they're still out there, somewhere. If you could just bring them back, anything you need. 
attention. Hey, Paul. You ready to go? We're just grabbing some supplies. Just about ready. What are you gonna use today? I decided to go with the Colossus. I'm gonna use my Ranger. Try out some new upgrades. But it gets better, because we also had to listen to that incredibly scripted team communication, which somehow weaseled its way into all of the MMO trailers at the time. Uh, I'm not sure we want to use all our supplies on this guy. Yeah, he seems like a problem for another day. Hang in there. Almost there. There are a lot of scars down there. All oh, the scars have a heavy. Yeah, time to use that mortar. <laughs> yeah, give me some covering fire. Okay. There's a bunch more coming in. Okay, I'll get this round. <laughs> Beside all the differences in the final product, there is also the large controversy between Bioware and the executives they were forced to impress with absolutely stunning and fake gameplay they have cooked up for them. Needless to say that after the money rolled in, the title took a dive in construction until what was left for the actual player was just a shell nobody was interested in. The next example is one of my favorites. You wouldn't know this, but I was always a big fan of Bioshock Infinite. Strangely, I don't care for the previous games, I don't like the gameplay that much, and even the time travel storyline wasn't interesting to me. Though watching the E3 demo in 2011 has made me very interested. The game looked like something I would enjoy indulging myself into and letting it steer me wherever it wants. Upon revisiting the mentioned gameplay demo though, the reality inevitably crashed with the fantasy I was subjected to. Glossing over the radical gameplay change that made it feel much more linear and, you could say, claustrophobic in the comparison of the actual game, some of the worst lies in this game committed was the tears Elizabeth could do, like teleporting to the past to save a horse. Booker having the option to kill it that he didn't take. This function ultimately made it to the game, however it was merely a battle mechanic, like bringing a barrel of ammo or healing. There's also the small part of the demo where Booker aims his gun at an NPC whilst talking to him, hinting that the game will have a mechanic similar to what games like Red Dead Redemption 2 do. Even through that all, there is still good amount of things in the demo that was pretty much spot on in the actual game. This one is personal to me, Dying Light 2. I have mentioned before I have well over 200 hours in Cyberpunk 2077. The matter of fact is, I rarely do play one game for that long. I rarely even replay games at all. Well, when it comes to Dying Light, the first one, I have spent on it nearly 170 hours. So it comes as no shock that I was pretty excited about the second in line. And if that wasn't enough, Declan has hyped me up some more along many others. The many many trailers and gameplay with commentary promised things like multiple factions, hard decisions dictating not only the story but also the visuals on the map. One big lie stands out about this and that is the fact that in one of the trailers we were being visually led to believe that there is a path in which we can partially sink the map making it entirely different for the player. By draining one side you unlock the other and find completely new things in it. This was huge and yet it seems that Techland didn't really want to expand upon this at all. Well, today we know why. The facts are that this was indeed an option in the game, only it was nearly inevitable to happen and also it was part of the story ending. Which sucks twofold when you realize not only this was intentionally showed in the trailers to confuse the players, but it also spoiled the ending of the game. Yes. The main valve should be somewhere there. Frank would be proud of
It's time for a little blast from the past. Let's take a look at the other side of the game, our new Radiant AI system. It allows NPCs to have full 24-7 schedules. These NPCs are not scripted. Todd Howard is at this point well known for... well, for lying. I can't sugarcoat some of the things Todd has told over the years. Basically every time this man talked on any stage there has been always something he sort of made up or maybe he just didn't say. Well, of all the Fallout 76 lies you may have heard, this is one that I didn't even know until I started looking. It's year 2006 and Oblivion is pacing up to be one of the biggest releases ever yet. One of the features promised in it is the Radiant AI. Which may be a tough concept to explain, Radiant AI was Bethesda's answer to endless exploration. What it meant for players was that new encounters and questlines would be constantly happening as the AI itself would make their own problems. Strange gates have appeared and Daedra swarm the Legion soldiers. This would include a new dialogue, different outcomes every time you replayed the game and should result in endless exploring. In theory. When push comes to shove, players would learn fast that this concept was nothing more than a dream that understandably crashed and burned. <laughs> Except it didn't even do that. At the time of recording this in-game footage, all the features displayed were completely fake and none of it worked. As a concept to show it was interesting, as a promise to a paying customer, bold faced lie. The worst part about this whole concept was that when you think about it, every dialogue and quest in the game has to be voice acted, meaning there always was a finite number of things to do. Even if NPCs did work independently, the game itself would have to run out of content eventually. So none of this could possibly ever work anyway. I should have known you were only teasing. Now, Biomutant is its own beast in the mystification department. While the developer studio initially hoped for a more personal gameplay, a little bit like the camera style you get in the new God of War, once the team showed what they had in 2018, it didn't take long until a publisher giant, THQ, acquired them. The story doesn't end the way you think though. I mean it does, but it's the way we get there that's interesting. Once THQ Nordic signed the deal, Experiment 101, the developer, changed their mind several times over the course of two years. This meant going from the more personal style to almost top-down hack and slash, enemies became damaged sponges and the overall feeling, world included, was inflated without any substance. It's safe to assume anyone who expected the 2018 trailer to hold up on the 2021 release day would be very disappointed. That's just the tip of the iceberg here, because just a few months before the release in 2021, THQ released more gameplay footage that, while being far more accurate representation, it also hit a lot of information. These black stripes on the top and bottom, these are not caused by a widescreen mode, which the game doesn't even support. They were added in post-production to hide the heart. The question for a while after the release was, why? There is not a lot on top to hide, and the HUD itself is pretty clean, if you ask me. The answer is pretty simple though. Remember when I said the game has drifted from up close action to the damaged sponge NPCs? Well, this wasn't exactly the PR THQ wanted in their marketing. And while Experiment 101 were comfortable with the way they changed by a mutant, the HQ were not confident in this decision, so they decided to just cut the screen off. Gotta give them props for at least not forcing the devs to change the game even though they had clearly no faith in it. Why don't we close up with something a little more optimistic? Yes, there is a game that has lied or deceived in a way but still delivered much better than we all thought. Spec Ops The Line has earned incredible amount of fame and admiration, from myself included. While the story of Spec Ops is definitely one to play through, 
the gameplay trailer on its own presents overdone, bleak copy-paste of every third-person shooter ever. Vontat you would consider buying maybe for the multiplayer if the multiplayer didn't look almost intentionally bad. While none of the marketing intended to make you disinterested in the game, a lot of effort went into making sure nobody expects the incredible strength of this game's story. We will not dive into the spoiler territory here, but I will say the game covers shocking amount of controversial topics when it comes to deployment and war. It also features two different endings, each with its own grim feel. For dozens of game review websites and channels, this game was the biggest shock of 2012. Even though today anyone would barely remember how poorly the title presented itself at the time, you can be sure that gamers around the world got a quick notice of the title that hasn't been topped since. When it comes to pleasant surprises, Spec Ops The Line has to be holding the gold medal for deception. He's already dead. And that's the end of my list. There's a simple reason I've decided to cover this topic, specifically the lies we were being told by every publisher company. Each year millions of players get excited about something new, something they were waiting for for a long time. And this video should serve not as warning to be skeptical, but learning opportunity that even if you are lied to, more often than not, it shouldn't discourage you from discovering anything and giving a chance. Some people say white lies are there for people who can't trust their own judgment. That it's easier to make you believe something is much better than it is because you will end up liking it anyway. And like I said, chances are that by the time you are done playing, you won't even remember all the lies that led you there. 